Good morning. My name is Karen Jamison Trivett, and I'm Associate Professor and Head of Special Collections and College Archives in the Gladys Marcus Library at the Fashion Institute of Technology, part of the State University of New York. We call ourselves FIT for short. Welcome to another installment of the FIT Talk series, the oral history program of FIT. Today is October 16th, 2018, and the time is 11.09 a.m. I am interviewing today Ms. Judith Mendel, formerly Judith Chronic, here on the FIT campus, located at 7th Avenue at 27th Street in Manhattan, New York. We are in the FIT Library Unit of Special Collections and College Archives, also known as SPARC. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. My pleasure to be here. Well, it's a great way to start the morning. Um, for context, if you will, uh, please tell researchers a little bit about your childhood. I was born in Mount Vernon, raised in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I'm a Bronx City girl. Great. I was born on August 3rd in 1927, which obviously makes me 91. I had a wonderful childhood. It was a wonderful neighborhood. Um, I lived near Bronx Park, and we had the run of the neighborhood, uh -huh. the children did. So we used to go to the park and the botanical gardens and all over. And we played all the games that you've heard of, hopscotch and jacks, and we jumped rope, and we roller skated, and the boys were in the street playing stickball mm -hmm. with broomsticks. Um, everybody was poor or just getting by, but we all had a wonderful time and a lot of fun. I must put in, Hillary Clinton once said it takes a village to raise a child. I had that village. Aww. So I really had a wonderful childhood. Anyway, I went to Christopher Columbus High School, <coughs> which I know does not exist anymore. They took the building down. But in my last year, I was always interested in art. It was not an art school, just a regular high school. And they had one fine arts class, which I took. In my senior year, which would have been, uh, it started in September of 1944, the art teacher told us there's a brand new school opening up, brand new, called the Fashion Institute of Technology and Design in New York City. And if you think you'd like to go, make a portfolio as we work along mm -hmm. and send it in, which I did. I happen to have it here. And they accepted me. Okay, because I originally thought I would go to Trap Hagen. I didn't know about FIT then. But I'm so glad that they did choose me and that I did go. However, there is a tuition involved, and I didn't have it. We were a poor family. My mother was uh, a mother of three without a husband. Well, she had one. She was married, but he was out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And it was a struggle. So my grandfather, who lived up in Springfield, Massachusetts, said, I will get the money together for you, which he did. And so I went to FIT. Oh. Now, from this innocent, wonderful childhood that I had, and breeze through high school, which everybody knows if you pay attention, is so easy. <laughs> I come into FIT, and there were three things they told us. The first thing they said was, we're connected with the manufacturers in the garment district. We're right down here. And they are so anxious to have you, this little group graduate in two, in two years because whatever field you're in, if they are making hats, they want the one who specializes in millinery, you've got a job. They know that you're going to be thoroughly trained because it's going to be a tough course. If you make it, they want you. So we were so excited about mm. that. The second thing is, they said, we want you to go out and buy a sketch pad. <clears throat> and they want, and, and a sketch pencil and some drawing charcoals. We want you to carry this with you everywhere you go. We don't ever want to see you without that in your arm. <laughs> so, of course, we did. Yes. And the third thing they said was, this is going to be a tough program, 
but don't worry about it because you're going to learn a little bit about everything and then you will specialize. And they, had, they held us to that word, or we held them to that word. Mm -hmm. I loved being at FIT. The, this building did not exist in 1945. By the way, it started in January of 1945. And because I had finished high school in three and a half years, I had enough credits, I was able to go right into FIT. I do know that for a few years, it ran from January to December, but then they changed it to go like all the other colleges from September to June. However, um, it was January 1945 when I first came here. I was, I couldn't believe everything we had to do. It was almost overwhelming. Yes. Am I going too far ahead? Not at all. Not okay. at all. It's lovely. And it sounds a lot like what students say today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> because I was talking to some students yes. yesterday. We were so busy, they really kept us busy, that there was no time even to form relationships with your fellow students. You saw them, you knew who they were, but you couldn't be friends because you were just too busy uh, going someplace. They'd send you to the museum, they'd send you to the cloisters, they'd send you to the ferry boat, whatever. Wow. We had all kinds of assignments and a lot of reading. We lived in the library when we mm. could. And everybody complained, too much homework. <laughs> And I had seen a lot of students yesterday, and I asked them, I said, do you feel the same way? Oh, did they? Too yes. much homework. Yes. But it pays off. You somehow do it. Mm. You learn to organize yourself. This is something I picked up from going to FIT. Mm -hmm. I never thought about organization. Mm -hmm. But by golly, if you aren't, you cannot get through this program. And I can't speak for any other course or college, I'm talking about FIT. It was tough, but you learned so much. I remember a lot of the things that we took. I did mention we were in the up, upper uh, two floors of the Needle Trades High School. Right. That's where I went to FIT until they built these buildings. Mm -hmm. Do you know when they started this? Yes, we, our first two buildings were <clears throat> um, erected in 1958 with uh, entry in 1959. Then it was about 13 years after it began. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's quite a while. Mm -hmm. However, we did just fine up there in Needle Trades High School. And I do have a few very significant remembrances. We had one teacher, I, I hope, I'd like to look through the yearbook because if you have a picture of the instructors, I might be able to remember her and pick her out. Mm. But what I remember is she was tall and slim and white haired, so probably a little bit older. And she had a lipstick red suit and a royal blue suit, just a plain jacket and skirt. <coughs> She wore this every single day. She had several tops. You could see it right here. Mm -hmm. She had white, yellow, Kelly green, and red. And she intermixed it with her two suits. Mm -hmm. Maybe she had two or three of each color, but she wore one or the other of those suits every day with one of the inserts. My goodness. I will never forget it. They, they were well, what you might say, primary color, mm -hmm. blue and red. So they were very outstanding. Yes. Okay. I also remember the life class that we took. <laughs> <laughs> in 1945, we were very innocent. We never had the exposure you people have to sex and nudity and what goes on and all kinds of things about life. We were very, very <laughs> sheltered. So the first day of our life class, they have a large room. I believe today it's a cutting room mm. where they cut on these large tables. The room is probably this big, maybe a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than this. And we walked into it and in the middle was a one foot high six by six platform. And then all around there were easels set up. And we were, to, oh, by the way, our class I think maybe 32, 35 people. That's all we were. Yeah. Today the classes are like 
I don't know, a few hundred? Well, the classes tend to stay small, but there are many sections of a class. It was all of us. Ah. It was all oh. of us. Oh, we have about uh, 9,000 students now. How many in the first year? How many come in each year? I do not know, sitting about here. About 1,000? I would say so. Okay. I would say so. Then look at the figures. I mean, we yes. were 30-something. So we all we, we walk in and we all get behind an easel and an old lady comes in with a robe, walks over near the platform, drops her robe, stark naked, and everybody <laughs> turned bright shades of red. <laughs> there were two or three young men in the class with all the young ladies. And we were so embarrassed, but we sketched. And by the way, she put one leg up on the platform, went like this, and just stayed still. And whatever <laughs> angle you were at, you drew. <laughs> oh boy. But the next day didn't phase us. And after that, we didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So it worked out fine. That's awesome. I remember that. That's so cool. I also remember my draping class. I mm. think that was the most difficult. Mm. I never knew how you, ma you know, you wanted to make something. I used to sew my own clothes. You'd go out, you'd buy a pattern the material and you do it. Well, at FIT, we learn how they make these patterns. We learn how they design the, the outfit that you like. We learned about the material that you're buying. There were classes in each of these things. We learned how to make a hat that was millinery. We, were, we learned fabric design. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even remember everything. There were also the academic subjects, the sociology, the English, um, a few other things. I found some of my paperwork and I'm giving it to you, Karen. Thank you so much. Um, if you find anything valuable, Absolutely. there are outlines, there are work, and here and there you're gonna find other handwriting on there that says too much homework, <laughs> which the different students would write on each other's <laughs> papers. It's kind of funny. Yes. <clears throat> so did you have to declare a major when you started at FIT? No. Oh. You took a little bit of everything, and mm -hmm. the time to, de to declare your major is when you're ready to do your second year. Ah. Oh. And then, and since I did not go to the second year, and the reason is I simply didn't have the money. I qualified. I mm. made it. But my grandfather said he could not help me at this time, and we just simply didn't have it. Right. I was heartbroken. I'm sure. But I said, well, I have to get a job and help my mother, you know, support the family. And I wanted to stay in the field, so I took a job in a custom-made dress house. Hmm. Well, that was an experience in itself. Somebody is coming in and getting a garment that will cost them between $300 and $1,000. Oh. Heavens, if you made $25 a week salary and what you were doing in 1945, that was great. Yes. If you were earning... 40 to $50 a week, you were rich. Mm. So somebody spending that much money, you, you, it was out of my world. Yes, yes, yes. But I learned a lot there because mm. I know every step in how it works. I don't think I want to take the time to tell you it, unless you want to hear it. Well, feel free. I do have some other questions, but I want you to right, carry on because it, it's relevant. A customer comes in and she has this lovely little room she sits in in a nice comfortable chair and they bring her some wine or something. And uh, they say, what would you like? And she says, well, I'm going on a trip and I want an evening gown and I want something to run around the streets with. Okay, two outfits. So uh, she comes back in a week and the designer comes up with an even, several evening gowns and several run around the streets outfits. Again, she comes in, she sits down, she's comfortable in a chaise lounge, and they show her the pictures and she said, well, I like this gown, but I don't like that color. I'd like it in cranberry. Mm. Okay. The street, have, oh, this one's perfect, great. The next thing they do is, we people in the back, we are, draping from the picture, making the pattern. Somebody else will lay the pattern on the material. Somebody else will come and trace onto the material. All the seams, the darts, 
the buttonholes, whatever markings need to be on there. Then the garment is made, not for the lady, but for a model. And then when the two things are ready, <clears throat> which probably take two, three weeks, they call the lady in, she comes into her lovely room with her drink, <laughs> and then the model comes in and models what she wants, her um, gown and her everyday outfit. And if she's happy, then they take the customer and they make, they, they make a figure mm -hmm. molded to her body. Oh, wow. What do you call it? The, uh, the figure thing uh, on the, a stand. The mannequin. The mannequin, which is the exact body of the customer. Wow. Now we go through the whole procedure again to make it to fit this lady. And of course, it's going to look beautiful on her because you are fitting it to her yes. figure. Yes. Then she comes back, tries them on. Of course, she's happy and she pays the money. And so it goes. Mm -hmm. That's custom made. Also, the way you sew, the materials that you choose, the highest quality, the best methods. And I watched this and learned this. Very good. My job was the using the uh, tracer. tracer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great big tables and materials laid out and some kind of a carbon that didn't hurt the material, the paper on top of it, and all the markings, the seams, the darts, everything, I had to do very exact mm -hmm. with the tracer. I didn't stay more than about six months because the lady who ran the shop treated us so badly. Oh, no. We could not talk to anybody oh. while we worked. We couldn't listen to the radio. We couldn't leave to, for any reason, unless it was an absolute emergency. <coughs> and you put in your time. If you were late, you were fired. I mean, oh, we worked sake. hard. Mm. But it was not good conditions. And I thought, I don't need this. I, I can't see where I'm getting any place. Mm -hmm, and I didn't mm -hmm, like it. Mm -hmm. So I left. And then I really didn't work in the field anymore. I took a job as a switchboard operator. I believe okay. it was the Board and Milk Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun. I did this. So it would have been 1947. And to 1949, I was working. Mm -hmm. And on a visit to Springfield, Massachusetts, where we had relatives, I met my husband. Very good. And in 1940, the end of 1949, we got married. Hmm. And of course, lived in Springfield because not that he was from there, but that's where he was working. Very good. And so I never left Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay, how did I use what I learned? In so many ways, Karen, mm -hmm. most especially when you have to do an awful lot of stuff in a certain amount of time and get it done well, I learned that if you're going to do something, you better do it right and you better do it well, mm -hmm. right from the beginning. I learned that you've got to somehow get organized. Yes. And you do. Yes. It kind of comes natural because, you know, your mind is just working in many yes. directions. I took personal pride in doing this. Mm. I always have. Um, I feel good when I accomplish something and have done it right. I also learned a lot about sewing. Um, if I went shopping, I could tell a good material from a bad material. Mm. Um, when I did my sewing, I did it the right way. It may have taken a little longer, but <laughs> that's the way I learned and it was really good. Very good, so, very good. So as a young person, <coughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Or well, did you I have to be a fashion illustrator? Very good. But I wasn't. Mm. And somebody asked me yesterday, did I have any regrets? And I have to say yes and no, mm. a little bit, but not where it bothered me because mm -hmm. you've got to make do with what you have and what you can do. And the circumstances you're right. in. And so I did. And I, I've enjoyed what I've done. I've had a good life. There was another way that I did use what I learned at FIT. Mm. When I was about 51 years old, my children were all grown on their own. My sister and I decided to open a small shop in Springfield. Aww. It, it started out as, as a consignment shop. It mm. was 
secondhand toys, clothes, and furniture. Now, people would, we advertise, and people would bring us stuff. Because of my experiences at FIT, as I looked through the clothing, I knew what was good and what wasn't. I knew how it was made. So I did not accept the stuff that wasn't good. <laughs> as a result, my little secondhand shop had beautiful things. Very nice. And it got to the point where some of my best customers were from Longmeadow, Massachusetts, which is one of the wealthy, wealthiest areas in the United States. I don't mm. know if any of you ever heard of it. <clears throat> But uh, these people heard about my store, and they'd bring it in. And I changed from consignment to buying the things outright, because I was doing so well, I could do that. And you buy them inexpensively, but the stuff was gorgeous, and my prices were good. But even though they were low, everything sold. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Would you like a sip of water? No, I'll be all right. I, okay. Do I have these senior things? Oh. Senior allergies. Okay. <laughs> and for example, when the stuff would come in, everything got washed and ironed before it went out. Mm -hmm. And let's say somebody gave me this beautiful little sweater, maybe a handmade little sweater, beautiful, but the zipper was broken. Well, through the years, I never threw anything out without removing the buttons and the zipper. Mm -hmm. So I had quite a collection of stuff. And I had it there in my oh, store. Oh, perfect. So I'd take this little sweater and take the zipper out and put a new zipper in mm -hmm. and blocked it. And oh, it was beautiful. I got nice money, but very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had an ironing board next to my desk. And customers would laugh sometimes. They'd walk in, and if I weren't busy, I was at the iron, <laughs> ironing the things but they appreciated it. Mm. I had so many people telling me, you've got the best secondhand store in town. Oh, wonderful. And I, had, I did wonderful business. And at the end of every season, when you change you know, from winter to summer, I guess it was twice a year we mm -hmm. did this. Mm -hmm. I had sold everything. I, if I had Amazing. anything left over, it would, it would fill that gray box right there. Oh my there. goodness. That's it. Wow. So I did well. That's very impressive. And I think it's because the prices were right and mm -hmm. the stuff was lovely. How did you develop your business acumen? From organization, mm -hmm. doing the best you can, uh, the knowledge of materials and, and clothing, mm -hmm. because basically it was clothes mm -hmm. that I had. Mm -hmm. Uh, the toys and the furniture were wonderful, but it had nothing to do with the fashion, and anybody could do that. Right. <clears throat> it was fun. I loved what I did, and every day I couldn't wait to get up and go to work. You know, I don't think there are too many people that feel that way when they have a job. Me. That they do you. <laughs> then you know exactly what I'm talking I about, do. Karen. It's, it's uh, irreplaceable. Isn't it a wonderful feeling? Absolutely. You really can't wait to get there. Exactly. And when you're there, there's always a few things you don't like what you're doing, but you do it, you get it over with, and basically yes. it's just wonderful to be there and doing it. Absolutely, this. absolutely. No, we're very lucky in that regard. Um, yes. When you reflect on your time at FIT, are there any particular people or experiences that stand out? No. Okay. Not, not per se. Mm -hmm. It's kind of everything. Okay. Now, it's hard to say this, but so I hadn't really thought too much mm -hmm. about uh, FI, not FIT. I do think of that from time to time, but how pe so many people influenced me. Mm. They all did, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. one in particular. As I look back, to summarize it, Karen, I would have to say the choices of the teachers or professors or whatever you instructors, whatever you want to call them. Sure were top-notch mm. because we really learned to to get all that we learned in one year mm -hmm. amazes me yes I'm not brilliant I have a normal IQ I am not any more than average okay so to accomplish all that and do it well it's because it was taught well mm. now I myself have 
uh, I'm into mahjong. I don't know if anybody knows what mahjong is, no. the game. No. It's a Chinese game that Americans have taken up. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It's so much fun. It's a good, it's, it's a mind game, but mm. not, hard, not difficult. Mm -hmm. And I teach it. Oh. And I've taught over 300 people over the wow. years. Wow. Now, I've met people who didn't want to learn because they said it's too hard. Somebody tried to teach them. It was too hard. Mm -hmm. If you're teaching somebody and you don't teach them the right way, they are not going to learn. They're going to hate it and they don't want to go back to exactly. it. Exactly. But if you have somebody who teaches it right, they warm up to it. They, mm -hmm. they, they learn to love it. Very cool. And someday you're going to meet people who do know about Mahjong and they'll tell you how okay. much they love the game. <laughs> Another person and people, <laughs> to, to join um, you. Lots and lots of people. Very it's cool. big in New York. How have you not heard of I this, do Karen? Not, I'm, I'm too <coughs> focused on my work, I guess. Okay. I guess so. At um, any rate, yes. that is from going to FIT. Mm -hmm. um, I thank all those instructors. I yeah. don't remember them individually, mm -hmm. but if they were able to teach me all this and I got it all, they did something right. Exactly. exactly. And I would assume they're even better today. Well, <laughs> we're very proud of our faculty and staff here at FIT. That's for sure. We have over a thousand faculty here today. Imagine that. So, okay. and we're growing our numbers yes. uh, as we speak. Um, when I think about the time that you were here at FIT, what, if any, correlation do you make with the World War II period? Um, any effect that it might have had? None. None. It really, no. Okay. Because what you're learning had nothing to do with the war. Sure. Uh, even shortages didn't mm. affect us mm -hmm. because we weren't buying things. We were learning how to do things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And we had such a variety of subjects that we had to cover, so there wasn't. The only connection I had with World War II, I'm 17 years old, I knew an awful lot of fellas, they were all in the service, and somebody was on leave every Saturday night, yeah. and that, I went out Saturday night <laughs> on a good. day. Other than that, I was busy with FIT work every minute. <laughs> Very good. Well, um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask what uh, literature or books had a special influence on you as you developed your uh, work and expertise in fashion design? Uh, while I was going to FIT? Yes, ma'am. Or, oh, or before or after? I don't remember. We lived in the library. Mm. Uh, what does stand out are the visits to the cloisters and the museum. Yes. Because now, this is the Metropolitan um, Museum of Art? More than one, so of I'm course. not sure which one. Okay. Uh, these were assignments, and with our sketch pads, we had to sketch different things. And the idea was, you might pick up ideas for today's fashions from things that you see from years mm -hmm, ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could be anything, everything uh, from materials to trimmings to buttons to uh, collar lines to colors, whatever, mm -hmm. and all of it. Mm -hmm. So that was very good. And we saw so many of these costumes and we read so many books of it. I can't remember any one, but I will tell you, and this mm. is so silly. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing the movie Gone with the Wind. Oh, yes. And I was so taken with the outfits that Scarlet wore. Wow. I don't, I, I love the movie and it's one of the best books I've ever read. I've mm. read the book, I think, three times. But the costuming was so exquisite. Does, has anyone here, have you seen it? Of Karen? course. I was so taken with the colors and the design and the, the, everything about it. And then when I went to FIT, so I guess I always had fashion on my mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I don't think I can answer the question as That's to what fine. I read or saw. Sure. But I, I'm always aware. Mm -hmm. I always looked in store windows. I loved magazines that showed illustrations. Mm -hmm. I loved the daily newspaper that showed what Macy's had or the local um, department store. Sure. And they were illustrated. Mm -hmm. Today, there aren't any painted illustrations. Mm. Everything are live models. Yeah. So 
I don't even know if there's a field for a fashion illustrator anymore, is there? There absolutely is. And we still have a curriculum here to support that endeavor. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but yes. where? Where would they be doing this? Um, I know of one professor <coughs> here at FIT that has a contract with Dior, the House of Dior, the beauty side of the house, and he does illustrations um, at various outposts around the, con around the world, actually, um, to support their marketing and merchandising efforts. Okay. And I'm sure in the custom-made dress houses, they have to have their own illustrators exactly. and designers and everything. Exactly. There's always exactly. a field for that, I know. Well, to broaden the discussion a little bit, um, do you remember someone saying something to you that resonated with you or um, had a superior impact on your life? Uh, regarding Any what? Anything in particular. No, because other than my mother. I mm. had a very special mother. She was a quiet woman. She didn't talk much, but the little that she said was bango. It, mm. it meant a lot. Mm -hmm. um, she influenced a, a lot. As I look back, I realize she gave us children freedom. Oh. The freedom to explore, the freedom to try, mm -hmm. the freedom to even make mistakes. She never yelled at us, and she never hit us. Mm. She just spoke. And I remember when we were small, children lie. Believe me, <laughs> all children lie. <laughs> if we did something and she discovered it, and we'd say, we didn't do it, we don't know anything about it, she very calmly said, look, I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to punish you. In fact, I'm never even going to bring it up again. All I want you to do is tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. And then she'd sit and be quiet. Wow. And we'd look at her, and we realize she meant it, and we'd tell her. Very good. Okay. Now you know you shouldn't have done that. That was the end. We never heard it again. Lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very, she sounds like a remarkable person. She was. Mm. And I just want to take a minute to tell you this story. Yes. Because my mother was so special. We lived in this building, this village that I told you about. Everybody knew everybody else. The girl across the hall, her name was Evelyn. One night, she, there was a knock at the door, and the living room was right near the front door. Around the bend, I was in the kitchen. I'm 14 years old at mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. And the door knocks, my mother answers the door, and Evelyn is crying to beat the band. She's a 17-year-old girl, gorgeous girl, if you remember the actress Linda Darnell, she looked oh. just like her. Oh, wow. Beautiful girl. And she said, my mother's name was Lily. She said, oh, Lily, Lily, oh, I have such a problem. Like, I have to talk to you. And she said, come in, Evelyn, come in. And I'm in the kitchen listening. And they go in the living room, and she says, oh, Lily, she says, you know, and by the way, Evelyn is Jewish, and she says, you know, I'm in love with Willie, who is an Italian, Aww. Willie Cianci. And she says, my mother said, I have to go with Jewish boys and I have to marry a Jew or they're going to disown me. Aww. And she said, so I did go out with a, a Jewish guy, his name is Aaron. And she said, I'm pregnant with Aaron's child. What should I do, Lily? What should I do? And Aww. she's crying. Mm. And I hear a little bit of a silence and then my mother very calmly and firmly says, Evelyn, you'll think long and hard about this, and then you'll know what to do. Mm. Suddenly, she stopped crying, and she said, oh, Lily, thank you so much. I <laughs> knew I could count on you, and walked out happy. And I'm in the kitchen going, <laughs> now I'm in my 20s. I have a couple of children. I'm in the kitchen peeling potatoes or something. And I'm thinking about it, and I said, oh, what a wise mother I had. Mm. I got it. Then. Yeah, yeah. That was my mother. Oh. So how can you not grow up with someone like that and do things right and turn out right? But the freedom that she gave us mm -hmm. to think for ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to try helped me a lot. So she was a big influence. But when FIT took over with their wonderful instructors, oh my God, they really were. There aren't too many people that could do 
what your first year students have to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have still one year programs, two year programs, four year programs, and even master's oh, degrees that's now. That's another thing I, I have since found that. Yes, out. yes. Would you like to hear how come I'm here today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I had some of these, I didn't keep everything, but I kept quite a bit, and I didn't know what to do with them. And as the years went on, I just took my stuff with me when I got married. I had them on the floor of a closet in the apartment I lived in, and then when I moved into the house in 1953, I had two little girls and all my stuff, and I put them in the floor of another closet. Mm -hmm. And it was a number of years later, it was really beginning to get in the way. So my husband took all of that and he just put it up in the attic. We did not use the attic. It was a, a ranch house. And we didn't really have too much to put in storage. Oh, this is some of my FIT work. Yes. <clears throat> anyway, come to the present, present day. Just a few months ago, I live now with my son and his wife and their two children. Uh, my daughter-in-law is with me here in New York and my granddaughter that I live with. Um, this is in Chicopee, Massachusetts, which is a suburb right next to Springfield, Massachusetts. And I'm very happy living there. Good. And of course, I brought my boxes of stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got my own room. Um, and I just hadn't gotten into them. And one day, well, let me get to that in a minute. In this house, we have a large dining room and we get together every Saturday night with three of my children. The one I live with, my uh, son, daughter-in-law and grandchildren, and another son who bought the house that we originally had and raised the children in, oh, wow. where everything was in the attic, mm -hmm. and another son who lives in the area, in Springfield. We get together on Saturday night, we have dinner, then we play cards, and we have a lot of fun. So at the same time, my granddaughter, Samantha, who is the daughter of my daughter who lives in California, mm -hmm. but Samantha is 22 and she lives and works in New York City. Mm -hmm. So she happened to be up visiting me at the time. Mm -hmm. So there we are sitting around the dining room table and my son Gary that we sold the house to walks in with his wife, they still live there, and he says, we had some work done in the house and the workmen were up in the attic and they came down with this box of stuff <laughs> uh, and it's yours, you know, this is your stuff. Do you want it? So we put it on the table and I look at it and, you know, I'm haphazard. Samantha takes a look at it. She says, Grandma, you did these? <laughs> I said, yeah. She says, you did these? I said, yeah. <laughs> wow. She says, they're gorgeous. That's high school work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, they're gorgeous. I said, she says, I'm going to call FIT. <laughs> I said, no, you're not. Don't embarrass me, oh. please. She says, Grandma, I'm going to call them. These things are gorgeous. I said, please, Samantha, leave it alone. Anyway, when she was going home, she says, can I take this? I said, they're yours. Oh, I gave lovely. it to her. And it is Samantha who contacted FIT, spoke to Serene, showed, uh, sent pictures of what I had. He was interested, talked to you. You're starting the archives, archives. You have nothing from a first year student and that you would like something to put in there and that you like the work. I mean, this amazed me because yes. I'm thinking it's just the work. Well, I'm very happy Samantha did this because yes. I'm honored to be oh. here. I love being here. I love seeing everything I've been taken around to see. You people are all wonderful. Oh, and thank you. I guess I am happy that there is something to show people in the future what the first year students did. Absolutely. So that's how come I'm here. Well, we are delighted to have all of this happen. Um, and I love sharing your work with researchers, whether it's through this recording or uh, we are open by appointment seven days a week. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in seeing more <coughs> of Judith's work, you can make an appointment to see it. 
Um, I've also got our first uh, yearbook. Yes, uh, and I would love to take a look at it. Are there pictures of the instructors? There's not. Oh. They're just students. But I thought I would let you take a look at it anyway. Yeah. Class well, of 46. You know, I should do this later. I don't really want to take the time right now. That's but fine. Because That's fine. I would need more time to look at each sure, one. Sure, sure, sure. We but can this do is that. Lovely. Yes, it's a, it's nicely preserved. How many are there in the class of 40 of 46? I do not know. I want to say around 40. All right, um, I thought it was about 35. I know yes, I was close. Yes. Even 40. Can you imagine that? No. Uh, no. An entire class of just 40 students compared yes. to today? Well, we outgrew the <coughs> two floors at the High School of the Needle Trades um, very quickly. Uh, but we I'm may sure. do, as you pointed out, for about 13 years. Yes. Uh, and then we moved to this campus, which was planned for about 1,000 students. But at the time we moved over here, we had exponentially more students than that. Mm -hmm. So there was very quickly a master plan developed to increase the footprint of the campus, uh, which and has grown is. to what mm -hmm. it is today. Everywhere I go, they've heard of FIT. Yes. There are graduates who live there. Mm -hmm. There's one girl about, I'd say about five or six years ago, I, she opened a dress shop in uh, one of the sections of Springfield. And I went in there, and I don't know how I found out that she went to FIT, maybe. What, however I found out, I was questioning her. I said, you know, I went there too. Yeah. And uh, we talked a little bit about it, and she had this dress store for a while. So that's what she ended mm -hmm, up doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mentioned it to so many people, and if they don't know much about it, they have heard about it. Yes. I do know you have students that come here from all over the world. All over the world. This is just so uh, astounding to me. After our American uh, demographic of <clears throat> students, we have a very large demographic of uh, Korean students. Yes, so, I just heard about that. You, yes. You also have um, a place to go to school in Milan, in Paris, and in South Korea. Not in Paris, but in Florence, uh, oh, in Florence. as well as Milan, and then also uh, South Korea. Okay, yes. I, I think that's amazing. It's, it's truly stunning how we've grown over the decades, and well, we're about to celebrate our 75th anniversary. I know. And you can imagine how I feel being a first-year student as part of this. Yes. Because in a way, I may not have graduated, but I'm an alumni. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, in fact, I have a copy of our first course bulletin. I don't know if that looks familiar to you. It doesn't, but I'm sure I had this. <laughs> I would love if you could make a copy of this and send it to me. Oh, I can do that right away. It's already been digitized. So I can send it to Samantha. Yes, would you please? Yes, will do. Will do. So here we have what they call sequence of study. When you look at all the things we had to cover, doesn't mm -hmm. it, it? It makes you realize, wow. Yes, definitely. They, they, they gave us a lot. But well, we, and I think you've hit it on the head. Um, <coughs> I think what we want to elicit is a wow response. No matter what the curriculum, no matter what the experience, we want people to say, wow, that is a product of FIT. Yes, and I can see why when you graduate, you are a well-qualified person. Yes. They don't make it easy, and that's what you want. Exactly. If you're hiring somebody, you want somebody who knows their stuff. From who's day one. disciplined and the right one for the job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm sure they get it from here. I've got another couple of questions okay. for you. Um, what would you like for people to remember about you? I think the fact that what they see is what they get, that I'm always very honest and straightforward, that I, my life is an open book. I will discuss anything with anybody at any time because we all share these things together in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And why keep secrets? Right. Uh, if something is important or helps somebody else, 
they should know. Um, I think my basic policy is to treat people the way I like to be treated, and I mm. truly, truly live by this. Mm -hmm. I go to sleep every night with a very clear conscience, and I sleep very well. <laughs> um, I think honesty is so important Absolutely. to yourself and to others. And if everybody lived like that, we wouldn't have wars and so on, but it isn't always that way. True. <clears throat> True. The best we can do is do the best with what we have mm -hmm. and be true to yourself. Absolutely. But that, that sums it all up. Those I are think the that's things a that are nice important summation. to me. Yes. My last question is what question didn't I ask that you wish I had? I think you covered everything, Karen. <laughs> I don't believe you left anything out. Oh, it's been such a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you and hearing your story. And it is a story that makes up the FIT story. And that's why I'm, I'm thrilled to have it as a part of our archives and uh, our oral history program. And thank you so very much. I would like to add yes. yesterday, Dr. Brown introduced me to a, a group that I oh. spoke to last night here mm. at the school. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking all night about her. I thought, oh my God, this woman is wonderful. For her to get where she is, I would love to hear her story from the time she was a little girl and got to where she is. And I, I'm well aware of the big job that she has. Yes. Wow. Especially the size of the school that she's yes. in charge of. Exactly. I think you guys are lucky to have. Absolutely, and get ready because we're, I'm about to do an oral history with Dr. Brown. So wow. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when you can find it online. Okay. 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 Judith, thank you again. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure.